Eugene, last time I spoke to you, you said that uh, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky up against Chad Mendes could be the fight of the night, and it bloody well was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, it was a cracking fight yeah. between two very similar body types, and uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, had us on our toes for a little while when Alex got knocked down, but uh, yeah, the, the superior skills and the superior uh, conditioning and Alex's heart got him back up and back into that fight and now he's the number four ranked featherweight in the world so uh, I couldn't be more pleased with that result. Obviously Melbourne was too soon, when, when do you think he'll line up again? Uh, it, well, well now it gets just a little bit tricky and a little bit more difficult for him because now he's number four so there's only really you know three guys above him and in an ideal world because you want to move up you want to fight one of them whereas if you're further down then you've got like maybe 50 guys ahead of you and you'll fight any of them but now they're narrowed right down to only a select few and now it's just about securing those fights um, so in saying that um, waiting around for one of those guys to be available and all the stars to align can sometimes take a while so what Alex might be doing, and, and hopefully not, but what he might be doing is sitting sitting down, waiting for that fight for just a little bit longer than he's used to. But of course Alex won't be sitting around, he'll be, he'll be constantly working and training and getting ready for when he does, that opportunity does arise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen Dan was just leaving when we arrived this morning. Uh, is he back training or he just called in to see the boys? No, he just calls, it. he's still, he, he's not allowed to train here, but he's just, uh, calls in to see the boys and yeah, just keep up with what's happening in the gym. He's, you know, it's, he, it's hard to keep that guy out of the gym. Like I said, that's one of the only positive things about uh, the, the little injuries that he's got is that he has to just you know sit down and have pure rest, even though he might not like that. But it'll do him a world of good. Uh, he'll come back really enthusiastic. I've spoken to Izzy today and um, he seems if he's taken on board what you said about uh, his opponent in, in Melbourne and uh, yeah, are you happy with the message as well? Yeah, I mean, I think what we've got now is uh, healthy respect like you have to have for every opponent and their skill set but um, we're not uh, sort of respecting him too much where we can become a deer in the headlights Let's just say that. So, I think now we have a healthy respect. Um, we're definitely not uh, looking past him, but we're not also like putting him on a pedestal and turning him into something that he that he isn't. So, I think it's a healthy respect is what we have now. Yeah. And are you happy where is he is at the moment? As far as training is going, training has gone brilliantly. Like we actually got our first little niggly uh, a couple of days ago, and so it's only a small one. And, you know, comparing that to other camps, we've got, we're normally dealing with a lot more niggly little things in that in terms of injuries. So, uh, injuries are a part of every camp. It's just about how you deal with them and, you know, and how severe they are. And this one's just a small one. And other than that, we've had nothing. So, so far, touch wood, if I can find some wood around somewhere, yeah, it's going really well. So, yeah, very happy. And Shane and Kai, you're happy with them as well? Shane and Kai are going brilliant. Um, Kai just coming straight off the back of that last fight is, yeah, it's, it's, uh, virtually in terms of his conditioning and something and stuff, it's all pretty much maintenance. And with him, it's all game plan and schoolwork, which is a real luxury. So, um, yeah, he's, yeah, I mean, he could fight right now if the fight got moved to this day. And, and Shane's coming along really nicely as well. So, yeah, we're, where we, we're exactly where we should be for Shane and Israel, and Kai is ahead of where he should be, so can't complain at the moment. I know all the time you put into game plans, Eugene, how's that coming on? Has that been hard with these opponents, especially with uh, Kai's opponent you don't know much about? No, like uh, with, with Kai's and Shane's opponent, I've, I've got a, a fair amount of recent footage, so I've been yeah, pretty good. It's uh, pretty relatively easy to you know, put together a bit of a game plan for them and a strategy. 
with Israel has actually been the hardest because we don't uh, we don't have anything we don't have anything recent because of course we're coming off two years of doing nothing and then we so we have to go back quite a bit before we can grab a fight and then we have when we go back two years we have quite a big uh, you know quite a big bank of fights that we can go through but then not of all of those are suitable some of those are very quick um, and some of them are very because he's been fighting for so long yeah, yeah. some of those is questionable whether we should be going back that far so we've yeah so it's just picking the right fights to look at I mean we look at them all but it's picking the right ones that we really want to look into and like and in, in more detail and and yeah picking the little nuances and stuff that we but we yeah we have a pretty good idea of what we're doing now we've had a good idea a few weeks ago so we're just locking that in now but he was yeah anderson silver was probably the hardest one uh when you're watching video and stuff and trying to find video and footage just because he had a two-year ban so he's done nothing one of the innovative moves that you've done is you've brought in one of new zealand's best ever boxers yeah, so we've got uh, David Nika, um, one of New Zealand's yeah, best ever amateur boxers. So um, he's a really good person. We felt he was uh, a very good person to imitate Anderson Silva. He's good in southpaw. He can turn right-handed occasionally, and he's good right-handed as well. He can he can basically switch, and he can do it very well at a very high level. Dare I say it, probably better in terms of his hands than Anderson Silva, but that's only because David only boxes, obviously. And and he's very rangy as well. Yeah, and uh, Israel and Anderson will be close to the same height, so yeah, we think we're going to get a lot out of that sparring partner. So we've brought him into camp. Yeah, he's been here for about a week, so and he gets on really well with everybody. Gets on well with Israel. Their sparring is very technical, very sharp. It's like a pleasure to watch those two when they're sparring at it. They have lots of similarities, but they also have lots of like little differences that um, make the sparring very interesting for each other. As you can see that when those two spar each other, their minds are like ticking over constantly, trying to figure each other out. And it's dead even sparring. Like those two, it's hard to separate those two in the sparring. I'm sure Israel sometimes wants to take David down <laughs> just but he knows that he can't but yeah absolutely oh, that's brilliant so it's working for both of them you'd say I think it's working for both of them I think David's getting a lot out of being in our environment something fresh for him to uh, be around some other athletes who are also at a high level just like him that he can look at and figure out what they're doing and that he might be able to grab a couple of things and take back with him add them to his game and it, yeah, it can be nothing but good for both, both of those guys. Yeah, absolutely. Well, while we're on talking about boxing, of course, uh, Junior, is there anything to say about him? Is there anything in the pipeline as far as the fight's are concerned? Junior and Hemi together should have a big announcement, which I'm not too privy with all the details. And. I'm going to wait for Mark Cadell or Junior or Hemi to let you know, but let me just know there's a big announcement. They do have something big coming sooner rather than later. Well, that's but exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. obviously they're both fit and ready to go. So they're both ready to go. They're full on at the moment because we're anticipating all of those details to be finalised and locked in. Yeah, just in the final hour, so to speak, with negotiations with that. So they're both here now, so they're, they're, they're absolutely ready to go. Yeah. And the other thing I noticed, um, you're, you've always been busy, but you're, the gym's even busier now than it was last year. The gym at, at the moment is ex absolutely chock-a-block, especially at night time. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah. Just on the back of all the boys' success and all the trainers doing well and all the marketing um yeah i've got i'm um, what what i ultimately want to do is i want to in some sort of way or i hope or i want to help in some sort of way for not just this gym to be busy because we need all the gyms to be busy and particularly on the mma side we need more people participating more people following more people coming into all the gyms and training. You can't just have one or two strong gyms. 
that doesn't make for a strong sport. We need everybody pumping and everybody producing fighters at a grassroots level. And when we've got that, then we're going to have like true strength that you can count on for years to come. And I think we'll get there. I think we're at the start of something that's going to build. And hopefully everybody from what some of the boys are doing in this gym, in the UFC, and some other people doing well in one championship. Um, all, of, all around the world, there's different New Zealanders doing, different pockets of New Zealanders doing great things. I think it's going to culminate in the sport, like just slowly, slowly growing. And then ultimately, there'll be another generation of fighters that'll come up under the ones that we've got that'll be able to be at a high level, just like the guys now. So I'm hoping in some sort of way that our success uh, helps everybody. Yeah. You know, there's been a, a dearth of um, shows up here in Auckland. You know, Jason Vorster's the only one putting shows on in Auckland. Can you see uh, more shows for, for the MMA fans up here? The shows start at the grassroots level because a, a show you can only you can only have shows if you have participants. So on the ground level, and and I mean Chris Easley's talked to us about this, and we're getting together a kind of a, like a plan to you know like grow the sport a little bit at the grassroots level. When you get people walking in the gym and starting to train, and then you know flicking the switch and deciding they might want to compete, that's when you can start to you know, have more fighters on shows and have more shows, it grows the sport. It grows the sport. The more participants you have, the more shows you have, the actual, the better it is for everybody in the long run. And that's, that's ultimately where we have to go. Because the talent in this country is second to none. Like we have the, an enormous talent pool. We just have to like, you know, kick them through the door sometimes, give them some encouragement. Yeah. Sometimes Kiwis are, uh, very lackadaisical, you know, oh yeah, you know, whatever, you know, I'll just go and work and chill out over here, go out with the boys over here. But they just need a little bit of encouragement, get them in a gym and just kind of capture that talent and start, you know, guiding it. Man, you can have such a strong country in terms of the combat sports and, and MMA is what I'm really talking about, yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good way of thinking, you know, to spread it around a bit, so uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, as usual, thanks very much for giving us time for Combat TV and uh, we appreciate everything you do and we wish you all the best in Melbourne and I know 2019 is going to be some sort of a year for you, mate. Yeah, no, always a pleasure. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. Happy New much. Year. Yeah.